Grace Slick was the queen of psychedelic rock. But do you know, her struggle with addiction, heartbreak, and betrayal nearly cost her everything. But what drove the rock legend into a cycle of self-destruction? Follow us along as we uncover the rare photos and untold stories of Grace Slick. She was born on October 30, 1939 in Chicago, Illinois, USA. And despite growing up in a wealthy family, she constantly felt torn between her own desires and her parents' expectations. Her passion for singing was always present, but her parents insisted on her pursuing a more traditional career in the arts, which only added to her confusion. As she ventured into different career paths, like modeling and working as an airline stewardess, there was an underlying sense of dissatisfaction and restlessness. Feeling the weight of her parents' disapproval, she rebelled against their wishes and bravely pursued a career in music. But fate had something in store for her when she met Jerry Slick, a drummer who turned out to be her perfect match, not just in love but also in music. They got married and shared a deep connection, igniting Grace's true passion, music. The encounter with Jefferson Airplane was a turning point in her life. Witnessing their performance, she realized that music could be her calling too. She decided to take a chance and form her own band, The Great Society, drawing on the talents of her husband Jerry and his brother Darby, as well as a friend skilled in bass guitar, David Minor. With her band, Grace embarked on a journey of hopes and dreams, but as the Great Society began to gain traction in the San Francisco music scene, not everything was as picture-perfect as it seemed. The pressures of fame, the demands of the music industry, and personal conflicts within the band strained relationships and took a toll on Grace's emotional well-being. Despite the initial excitement, the band's journey was marked by internal struggles and creative differences. Each member was fighting their own demons and the Great Society struggled to maintain its harmony. Grace sensed the unrest, realizing that it was time for her to leave. She realized that she wanted more than what the Great Society could offer, and she longed to be a part of something bigger. Luckily for her, in 1966, an opportunity knocked on the door when Signe Tolley Anderson, the then singer of Jefferson Airplane, decided to step away from the spotlight to care for her child. Jack Cassidy extended an invitation to Grace, hoping she could fill the void. She couldn't resist the allure of a more professionally managed group, so she accepted. Jefferson Airplane's music took a psychedelic turn, and with Grace on board, they achieved new heights. White Rabbit and Somebody to Love became chart-topping hits, solidifying their status in the music scene. Her decision to join Jefferson Airplane marked a turning point in her career, but it also marked the beginning of a tumultuous period in her personal life. As the band delved deeper into their psychedelic direction, Grace found herself entangled in an affair with the guitarist Paul Kantner. The affair shattered the foundation of her marriage with Jerry Slick, and to make matters worse, she was pregnant with Paul Kantner's child. The consequences of her actions left her heartbroken and burdened with regrets. Tragedy struck again in the same year when Grace, along with Jorma Kakonen, engaged in a reckless drag race driving at dangerous speeds of over 100 miles per hour. The disastrous outcome was inevitable. Their car crashed into the inside of a tunnel in San Francisco, leaving Grace with severe injuries and physical scars that would serve as a constant reminder of her recklessness and the pain she had caused. Grace Slick's romantic journey with Jefferson Airplane guitarist Paul Kantner was a love story filled with both joy and heartache. They shared a deep connection that lasted for several years, but fate never allowed them to take the next step and marry. But despite parting ways romantically, they remained friends and musical collaborators until Kantner's passing in 2016, a bond marked by both fondness and heartache. After her breakup with Kantner, Grace found herself drawn to Marty Balin, the co-founder and singer of Jefferson Airplane. Their on and off affair ignited tension and jealousy within the band, causing ripples of discord. The undeniable attraction and chemistry between Grace and Balin were apparent, but their clashing personalities and goals added complexity to their love story. Grace's rebellious, outspoken, and adventurous nature clashed with Balin's romantic, sensitive, and idealistic demeanor. Though Grace regarded Balin as the love of her life, her infidelity and indifference strained their bond repeatedly. She rejected his desire to marry, driven by her disbelief in the idea of marriage. As she delved into making political statements through her music, Balin's focus remained on creating beautiful melodies, further driving a wedge between them. 
Balin in turn loved Grace deeply, but resented her for her erratic behavior and the dominance she displayed within the band. Her penchant for drinking and causing trouble with authorities and the media only added to the strain. As she overshadowed him in the spotlight, he felt like he was losing himself and his voice. Balancing Grace's strong presence became an arduous task, leaving him frustrated and angry. Eventually, the tensions became unbearable, leading Balin to make a difficult decision. He left the band, unable to withstand the tumultuous dynamic of working with Grace any longer. The demise of their relationship in 1978 unleashed a fierce rivalry as they competed for lead vocals and the spotlight in the cutthroat music industry. Undoubtedly gifted as a singer, Grace defied age barriers and achieved chart-topping success at the age of 46 when she achieved a remarkable feat by becoming the oldest female vocalist on a Billboard Hot 100 chart-topping single. However, her personal life was haunted by her struggles with men. She moved from one relationship to another within the band, seeking love and companionship but never finding the fulfillment she craved. From bassist Jack Cassidy to drummer Spencer Dryden and even the iconic Jim Morrison, Grace sought solace in the arms of those she collaborated with creatively. She even tried her hand at marriage again, this time with Skip Johnson, a lighting director for Jefferson Starship, which offered a brief hope of stability. But the union eventually succumbed to the same patterns of turmoil that plagued her previous relationships, leading to divorce in 1994. Amidst the ups and downs of her love life, Grace found solace in drugs and alcohol. LSD became her infamous companion, earning her the nickname The Acid Queen. She openly admitted to her struggles with alcoholism and substance abuse, a self-destructive path that spiraled out of control. Her addiction reached such depths that she had to seek help in rehabilitation. During Jefferson Starship's 1978 European tour, her alcoholism became a public spectacle. The band had to cancel a show in Germany due to her intoxication, resulting in an enraged audience riot. On the following night, she performed, but her inebriation rendered her unable to sing properly. Instead, she lashed out, attacking the audience and making hurtful remarks about Germany's history. Her erratic behavior didn't end there. She was dragged off of a San Francisco game show for abusing contestants, further highlighting the depths of her struggles. Desperate to break free from the chains of addiction, she sought detoxification and rehabilitation, finding brief moments of clarity and hope. But the shadows of her past kept haunting her, leading her on a cycle of pain not only in her own life but also within the band and among her fans. Grace's life was a heartbreaking journey, haunted by a relentless chain of insecurities, self-destructive behaviors, and tragedies. And beneath the dazzling exterior of her musical talent lay a deep-seated belief that she was ugly, feeding her inner demons and perpetuating a cycle of self-doubt. As her addiction spiraled out of control, her career began to crumble under the weight of her reckless behavior. Her no-shows and lack of self-control became a recurring theme, tarnishing her reputation and pushing her toward self-destruction. The consequences of her actions were severe, leading her to multiple arrests and earning her the label of TUI, or talking under the influence. One particular day, she got arrested while sitting against a tree, indulging in wine, bread, and poetry in the backwoods of Marin County. Because of her sarcastic response to a police officer's inquiry, resulting in yet another night in jail. There was another arrest in 1994 for pointing an unloaded gun at an officer, an act fueled by fear and desperation. And in her quest for sobriety, Grace made the painful decision to quit the stage, feeling out of place, performing as an aging musician, singing about emotions from her youth. Life after retirement was no easier as she faced hardships including a devastating house fire, divorce, and heartbreak from breakups. So, in an attempt to find solace and happiness, Grace turned to drawing and painting animals, seeking refuge in the strokes of her brush. Her renditions of the White Rabbit and portraits of her fellow musicians became a way to express her emotions and find happiness amid the difficulties she faced. Critics had mixed opinions about her artwork, but Grace remained indifferent to their judgment. For her, it was merely another extension of her artistic spirit, a way to continue creating without the physical demands of the stage. In the quiet solitude of her art, she found a sanctuary and a space to call home. Grace Slick's story is a testament to the complexity of human emotions, the lure of fame, and the haunting consequences of our actions. If you enjoyed this video, please support us with a like and be sure to check out the videos on the end screen of beautiful actresses from yesteryears.